This is the Scorekeeper 2 Test Manager account. The Test Manager is the person who is responsible for administering tests, uh, directly monitoring scores, and all of the management role that comes around with administering tests. This account is brand new, so I haven't created any tests. Uh, I can navigate using these tabs on the left. Uh, so, no tests in my test tab, no people in my people tab, uh, but in my library, I have access to the English test and 20 credits. Uh, and if you watch the account owner video, you can see why I have that access. Uh, but if I have access to content, it's because the uh, manager above me has given me access to uh, credits and test content to create tests. So I'll click on the English test because I want to create a test. Uh, and now I can create my test. So I click this green button. The first thing I'll do is name my test. Uh, all that matters about the test name is that uh, you can use it effectively to keep yourself organized. Uh, so you can name it whatever you want, the day of the week, um, the month, uh, the fiscal quarter, whatever, uh, whatever you need to do. Um, so we'll call this one Wednesday. Below that, I select my delivery method. So I can choose either phone or web. Uh, you must choose one for uh, a test, so if you need to deliver both types of tests, you'll have to create more than one test. In this case, we'll do the phone test. Uh, and below that, I choose the number of credits available. Uh, now, credits are the number of tests that I can give out. So I have 20 credits, uh, and I can give out 20 tests. Uh, for our purposes, we'll say that we have five people coming to this test, but just in case more people show up or, you know, something happens, I'll put in seven credits so that I have a, a few extra credits to play with in case anything goes wrong. So I'll click Next. Uh, now I'm to choose where to give this test. So I'll choose an on-site test for this video. On-site tests are designed to be delivered in a computer lab setting uh, or something like that where the test manager is in the same physical location as the test takers. I select the language for the test instructions, so I'll choose English, and then I'll select the uh, language for the test paper, uh, and in this case I'll let the, uh, uh, actually I'll switch to English as well. Click Next. Uh, and now I choose the phone numbers that I want to use to call in. So if I'm in San Francisco, I'll activate that one, and I'll say I want to choose the San Francisco number. Uh, you can choose more than one number, so I'll choose uh, Tokyo as well. Uh, and I can, I can call into either of these numbers and start the test. So I'll click Next. I get a quick update on the phone numbers that I've chosen. Um, and now I can choose to start my session. Now the session itself is the uh, kind of the, the tool that you'll use to administer these tests. Um, so I can open up multiple sessions per on-site test. So within Wednesday, I could have, say, a 10 a.m. session, uh, and then as I had people come in at 10 a.m. Um, and leave, I could close that session, and then I could open up an 11 a.m. session for the next, next batch of people, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, this is purely organizational, so uh, feel free to name it whatever helps you uh, keep organized. Below that, I have a checkbox for adding new people to the account. Uh, checking this box would simply mean that I had to have email addresses for each uh, test taker and then after the test is over it would create individual scorekeeper 2 test taker accounts to log in and check their scores um, but if I leave this unchecked I can add users without uh, adding their email addresses which is uh, oftentimes very helpful so I'll leave this unchecked click next and now I'm ready to start my session Within my session, I can see the uh, details that I've chosen earlier, so the test name, the test content, etc., the number of credits I have for this test, uh, and then a few options such as export data, export the score reports, test paper language, uh, and so on and so forth. What I'll want to do is add people to my test uh, using a variety of methods. So if I wish to add a person by uh, entering their, their information in these fields, um, let me just do that. 
uh, and I have to have uh, a unique ID uh, and this can be a student ID number or an employee ID number anything like that just so long as it's unique uh, to this individual session and I can add that person and they'll be added to my test. So now I have test taker 6 uh, I can see when I added them and I can see that they're pending. Uh, now the pending means that we are generating a TIN for them in the background to uh, enter when they when they call into the phone number and begin their test. Uh, now this process takes about two hours so when you have people showing up for a test it's important that you add them beforehand or at least add enough people beforehand uh, to create enough tins so that they uh, you don't run into a time issue where you're still waiting for the tins to generate. So we recommend adding all the people about two hours early if you can uh, or even the night before it really doesn't matter. Um, you can leave these sessions open for as long as you wish. Uh, in addition to typing in all the names like that I have a few add more options. So if I click add more I can choose the quick add function. So here I just select the number of people that will be attending the test so I'll just add one person this way uh, and when I add this person it will generate a uh, random unique ID with no other information. So I'll say next. I can see that I've generated this random ID 4787 and then today's date and I'll add the test taker. Now you can do that for a lot of people and what happens is when uh, you enter these these quick add people in uh, the status will say pending but then after two hours a tin will be generated and once you have those tins generated you can print out the test papers and then as people arrive and you give out the test papers you can monitor which uh, which unique ID goes with which person and then click the edit button so uh, in the simplest terms if I know I gave this uh, this particular unique ID to John Smith I can save that and update that after the fact. So you don't necessarily need to know everyone's name or information before the test starts. You can just do the quick add, add a bunch of people, um, generate the tins, and then uh, after the fact match up those names with the tins. I also have the option to upload people via Excel sheet. So I'll click add more again, click add manually, and I can type in each person's unique ID um, or I can upload people from an Excel sheet and I'll show you uh, this is the template that we offer and uh, it's just these four four columns so you have the first name last name email address and alternate ID again all that's required is the alternate ID so make sure that those are unique and you can add whatever information you need besides those uh, save this Excel template and then in the test you can upload the Excel template uh, and you'll be able to add all of those people at once and usually this is the most convenient option for everyone so I'll click cancel um, and after that uh, what you'll do is when these test papers do uh, do get provisioned when the tins are prepared you can click download test papers here and that will download one test paper per person and the test paper includes the test instructions uh, the user's tin number and all of the information required to start a phone test so you would download all these, print them out, and hand them out to, uh, to the different people. You can also, after that's done, export the data, which will export all of the scores. You can export individual score reports, which will export score reports for each person. Uh, and then finally, you can end the session, but we won't do that just yet. Uh, the last thing I want to show is that you can manage uses. So I'll click this. Uh, you can see that I have five available. If I know that I have uh, seven more people coming. I'll click manage uh, and I require two more credits so I'll say add two. Now I've added seven to my Wednesday test and now I have seven for the seven people that are about to show up. Uh, so that's the basic process of adding people, provisioning the tins, downloading the test papers uh, and then once you download those test papers you'll print them out and distribute them to the right people. You can click end session here and I'll get a quick update of everything that happened in the session. 
So you can see that nobody had any tests scored, nobody had any test errors, there are no tests in progress, uh, and two people were no-shows. So I'll end my session, and I'll go back to the session details. So now you can see that I have a test that was added to my test tab. Uh, previously this was empty. And I'll click on Wednesday. Uh, and one thing I want to draw your attention to is that I have nine available credits. And you might remember that I ended the session with seven available credits. Uh, due to the two people that didn't show up, I get those credits back. Uh, so there's no wasted credits in Scorekeeper 2. If you don't use these tests, you get them back. Uh, now that I've, I've uh, completed my test, I can export the data from here, and I can export the score reports as well. If I wish, I can go back to my library and I can create a new test, just in the same way. Uh, or I can stay with my test and create a new session. So I can do the 11 a.m. session and go through the process all over again to start this test, to add people, and then to uh, complete the test and export the score reports.